In this part, I will discuss regarding the natural history of the TAPVC and management. First come to the natural history of the TAPVC, it is present in around 1.5 to 3 percent of the CHD and 20 percent of the patient usually survive up to the neonatal period and 50 percent usually survive up to 3 months without operation. And death in first few weeks or months occur due to tachypnea, cyanosis and low cardiac output syndrome. Now come to the anatomical determinant of death before operation. Uh, that occurs may be due to pulmonary venous obstruction, long pulmonary venous pathway like in case of intracardiac TAPVC and small restricted PFO. Infants who usually survive up to few weeks or months may have cardiomegaly or large pulmonary blood flow and mild cyanosis. Presentation in late infancy, uh, these are the following are the clinical features if patient may present later in the infancy like tachypnea, recurrent episode of pulmonary congestion, failure to thrive, fluid retention and hepatomegaly. TAPVC with large ASD survive after infancy and in that case patient usually presented with mild sinuses and mild exercise intolerance. And in that case, patient usually present with stable hemodynamics and hemodynamics usually remain stable for 10 to 20 years. After that age, pulmonary blood flow and pulmonary vascular resistance usually increased and uh, after that ascent major complex may develop due to pulmonary uh, uh, artery hypertension. And now come to the clinical examination. In case of TAPVC without pulmonary venous obstruction, right ventricular heave is present due to right ventricular hypertrophy and loud S1 is present and systolic ejection click is present in the pulmonary area due to increased pulmonary blood flow and widely split second heart sound without respiratory variation is present due to ASD and S3 is present almost in all patient and S4 is present in older patient and ejection systolic murmur is present in pulmonary area and diastolic type cuspid flow murmur is present that occurs due to increased blood flow to the tricuspid valve and venous hum is present due to increased blood flow through the innominate vein. Now in case of TAPBC with pulmonary venous obstruction, there is minimal cardiovascular findings, no right ventricular heap is found due to most of the case right ventricular hypertrophy is absent and S2 split with accentuated pulmonary component is present. And most of the case cardiac murmur are absent, rarely ejection systolic murmur may be present in the pulmonary area and bilateral basal crepitation. Uh, present due to PBH and hepatomegaly and peripheral edema may be present. Now come to the ECG. In case of TAPVC without pulmonary vascular PVO, right axis deviation, right atrial enlargement, right ventricular hypertrophy and incomplete RBV may be present. And in case of TAPVC with PVO, right atrial enlargement rarely present and right ventricular hypertrophy present. Now come to the chest x-ray, TAPVC without PVO, there is increased pulmonary blood flow and RA and RV usually enlarged and prominent MPA is present and normal left side structure is present. And snowman or figure of its sign is usually find, uh, found in case of TAPVC with left innominate vein and not present in first few months of life and present in child and adult borders of the figure of 8 is uh, determined by the enlarged SBC innominate vein, enlarged vertical vein and enlarged RA and RB. Uh, TAPVC with PVO chamber sizes are normal in X-ray, diffuse triple density that forms reticular pattern that fans out from the hilar region that is present and curly B lines are present and prominence of superior pulmonary vein or cephalization is present and chest extra of obstructed TPVC is not diagnosed because it contains feature of pulmonary venous hypertension. 
now in a ct scan is usually required in place of complex anatomy and if echo is not diagnostic helical ct angiography with 3d reconstruction is preferred mri is uh, mri can be done if uh, echo is inconclusive and in case of tapbc without pvo white field imaging of pulmonary vein with blood flow within it uh, can be detected with mri and that can also determine flow direction and quantify flow velocity and tapbc with pvo in that case usually mri is not preferred because child is very unstable in that case contrast endurance 3d mri with door to door time less than 50 minutes can be used CAT study rarely done nowadays and in CAT study high saturation is found at the draining site of the uh, pulmonary vein and there is equal saturation in RA, RB, LA and LV. In case of TAPBC with connection to the leptinominate vein, uh, blood coming from the SBC usually go to the tricuspid valve and RV and PA and IVC to the PFO through LA, LV and ascending aorta. So, PA saturation is more than systemic saturation. Right ventricular pressure and PA pressure equal or more than systemic pressure and right atrial pressure and left atrial pressure difference should be less than 2 in case of non-obstructed TAPVC. This is more than 2 obstruction may be present and selective PA angiography is done that is usually diagnostic for TAPVC. Now come to the echocardiography. Echocardiography, the main goal of the echocardiography is to determine the number of the pulmonary vein and connections of the pulmonary vein and drainage of pulmonary vein and position of the intraatrial septum and systemic venous connection. And hemodynamics also can be determined and flow direction into the pulmonary vein or common chamber that should be determined and presence or absence of pulmonary venous obstruction or restriction at the PFO or ASD that can be determined and evidence of hemodynamic load like right atrial enlargement, right ventricular enlargement, diastolic septal flattening, right ventricular volume overload or evidence of right ventricle hypertrophy or pulmonary artery hypertension can be determined by tricuspid regurgitation jet and RV dysfunction or failure whether that is present or not can be determined. Now mainly subcostal view is used for infant and young children and parasternal or subclavicular or suprasternal view is used for older children and suprasternal notch view or crab view that is very important because in that view all pulmonary veins can be seen. Subzipoid, apical and high parasternal short axis view can detect the connection between the pulmonary vein and the systemic vein and pulsed or continuous doubler should be done to detect pulmonary venous obstruction. Normal PV doubler pattern a laminar low velocity phasic and short flow reversal during atrial systole with retrograde AOA. And in case of pulmonary venous obstruction, phasic pattern is lost and AOA is absent and there is increased velocity. Now acoustic shadow of the lung tissue is present that is why distal pulmonary venous stenosis cannot be identified in case of echocardiography or proximal or no long segment stenosis is usually not identified and in that case MRI is required and in case of cardiac TAPVC dilated coronary sinus is present that is usually diagnostic. Antenatal echo, uh, in through antenatal echo, TAPVC can be diagnosed and that is very challenging due to low pulmonary venous flow that is usually less than 7% of the combined ventricular output, but that should be suspected in case of dilation of the right heart structure, disproportion of the great arteries and hypoplasia of left side structure. And fetal pulmonary uh, vein usually determined in fetal four chamber view and short axis view. And in this diagram there is deviated septum primum that is why pulmonary veins are draining into the RA. And in this um, eco view there is small LA. 
but LV size is normal. There is septal flattening with RV volume overload that may be present due to right ventricular hypertrophy or right ventricular overload in case of TAPVC. In this high parasternal short axis view, uh, there is pulmonary venous connection that is uh, present posterior to the PA, posterior to the bifurcation of the PA and there is flow disturbance and in sub zipoid long axis view uh, the both the right and left pulmonary vein is draining into the common chamber and that is draining into the vertical vein in the parasternal short axis view the both the vein are draining into the pulmonary venous chamber and that is draining into the vertical vein sub zipoid long axis view in this case there is coronary sinus is usually dilated that's why uh, that this is eco picture of cardiac type of TAPVC. And in that case, parasternal long axis view also dilated coronary sinus is present. In this sub short axis view, uh, there is increased flow through the coronary sinus and that is also a picture of cardiac type of TAPVC. Sub zipoid short axis view in that case pulmonary venous connection is draining into the vertical vein that is going below the diaphragm. Sub zipoid short axis view in that case vertical vein is draining into the pulmonary vein. This is the pulmonary venous doubler. There is two S and T wave, and there is A wave, and A wave will be absent in case of pulmonary venous obstruction. Now pre-op optimization of the obstructed TAPVC patient, patient should be intubated and positive pressure ventilation should be given with 100% oxygen and metabolic acidosis should be corrected and PGE1 and balloon atrial septostomy is doubtful because PGE1 may increase the systemic blood flow through PDA with right to left shunt but if there is hypoxia that may cause increased systemic blood flow but uh, pulmonary blood flow will be reduced so th that is doubtful and now come to the different approach for supracardiac TPVC repair there are three approach uh, right lateral approach right atrial approach and left sided approach normally median sternotomy are done and pericardium open now come to the cannulation strategy in case of supracardiac or infracardiac TAPVC bicable cannulation can be done or RA cannulation can be done but in case of cardiac type of TAPVC only bicable cannulation should be done and when we are planning for circulatory arrest uh, RA cannulation can be done in uh, normally circulatory arrest is done in case of complex anatomy in case of pulmonary venous obstruction and in case of SVC or innominate vein stenosis. And in the right sided approach, first RA is elevated, then uh, RA, LA and common chamber is identified. After that incision is taken into the common chamber and LA, after that uh, continuous suture should be done with 7 of proline. Now come to the left sided approach. After midline sternotomy and cannulation and cardioplegic arrest, heart should be uh, deviated upward and that should be put into the uh, right pleura. After that, LA and common chamber should be identified and after that, anastomosis can be done. Now come to the RA approach. In RA approach, RA is opened and after that, uh, ASD should be identified and that should be enlarged. After that, posterior wall of the left atrium should be identified and that should be opened. After opening of the posterior wall of the left atrium, anterior wall of the vertical chamber should be identified and that should be opened. After that, anastomosis should be done and after completion of the anastomosis, HD patch uh, should be applied. Now, in case of coronary sinus TAPVC, after PFO should be enlarged and after that coronary sinus would be unroofed and after the unroofing of the coronary sinus patch is applied. In case of von Prague method, it is used to reduce the chances of postoperative 
pulmonary venous obstruction and in that case PFO is created and uh, large uh, ASD is created and um, PFO incision should be extended superiorly and inferiorly and um, coronary sinus unroofing should be done and the direction should be towards left side and imperially and care should be taken not to injure the mitral valve and should not go outside the chamber in case of accidental if you go outside the chamber suture should be taken from anterior surface because it's a bit difficult if you will try to take it from the posterior surface now in cardiac TPVC heart is deviated to the right pleura then uh, incision is given in the common chamber and LA after that anastomosis should be done. Now there are three pattern of the mixed TPVC first 2 plus 2 pattern in case of 2 plus 2 pattern uh, there are different types like right superior pulmonary vein and right inferior pulmonary vein to coronary sinus and left superior pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein to the brachiocephalic vein or vertical vein. Coronary sinus should be unripped and right sided pulmonary veins rechannel to the LA and vertical vein transected and anastomosis to the left atrial appendage. Dacron patch partition between the RA and com CPVC should be done and in case of right superior pulmonary vein and right inferior pulmonary vein to SVC RA junction and left inferior pulmonary vein to brachiocephalic vein via vertical vein in that case combination of syrup modified superior approach and classical warden technique for sinus menosus repair should be done. RSPP and RIPV to SVC RA junction and LIPV to RA in that case combination of classical warden technique for sinus venosus repair and acron patch partition between pulmonary vein and RA should be done. If pulmonary veins from right and left lung joins a respective pulmonary venous confluence and from each confluence to separate vertical vein descending into the abdomen, the vein from the right lung join the ductus venosus and vein from the left join the portal vein. In that case, right and left venous confluence anastomosis should be done and CPVC to LA anastomosis should be done ligation of the descending vertical vein that is called kanju technique. In case of 3 plus 1 pattern left superior pulmonary vein to the brachiocephalic vein by vertical vein and left inferior pulmonary vein with right superior pulmonary vein right inferior pulmonary vein to the coronary sinus in that case unroofing of the coronary sinus should be done with patch closure of the ASD and in case of left superior pulmonary vein to brachiocephalic vein by a vertical vein and left inferior pulmonary vein right superior and right inferior pulmonary vein joined to form the common chamber and draining infradiaphragmatically in that case apex of the heart elevated over the right pleural cavity and CPVC to LA anastomosis using a continuous portion of the vertical vein posterior approach will be done. In case of right superior pulmonary vein, right middle pulmonary vein to SVC RA junction and right inferior pulmonary vein, left superior pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein to brachiocephalic vein via vertical vein. In that case, rechanneling should be done through barded technique and in case of right superior pulmonary vein to high uh, SBC and right inferior pulmonary vein, left superior pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein draining directly into the R in that case rechanneling should be done to hands on technique. Right superior pulmonary vein to common sinus and right inferior pulmonary vein, left superior pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein joined to form a common chamber and drained in brachiocephalic vein in that case common chamber to LA anastomosis posterior approach should be done with RSBC rechanneling into the RA by unroofing of the coronary sinus. Right left superior pulmonary vein to vertical vein with dual drainage to brachiocephalic vein and coronary sinus, left inferior pulmonary vein and right superior and right inferior pulmonary vein joined to form a common chamber to drain in coronary sinus. In that case, vertical vein to brachiocephalic vein anastomosis 
should be done and for, after the ligation of the vertical vein coronation is unlooped and all pulmonary vein rechannel into the LA dacron patch used between the CPVC and the RD. Now come to the Bizier pattern. In Bizier pattern, right inferior pulmonary vein, left superior pulmonary vein, and left inferior pulmonary vein form a common chamber, and the common chamber draining into the SBC RA junction by right middle and right superior pulmonary vein. In that case, common chamber to LA anastomosis should be done, and uh, between RSPV and ASD sected and acron patch used to use to close the ASD and baffling of the right superior pulmonary vein. Right superior pulmonary vein and right inferior pulmonary vein join to form a common chamber and draining into the RA. Left inferior pulmonary vein draining into the RA and left superior pulmonary vein draining via the vertical vein into the brachiocephalic vein. In that case, under circulatory arteries, right superior and inferior pulmonary venous junction transected and anastomos to the ALA and fenestrated dacron patch is used to redirect the left inferior pulmonary vein, vertical vein, brachiocephalic vein junction transected and LSVC anastomoted to the left atrial appendage. And in case of right inferior uh, pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein join to form a common chamber and draining into the coronary sinus right superior pulmonary vein drain separately into the RA and left superior pulmonary vein drain via vertical vein into the left brachiocephalic vein. In that case coronary sinus unlooped right superior right inferior left inferior vein rechannel to the LA with a PTAP patch, vertical vein, brachiocephalic vein anastomosis should be done uh, and transection of the vertical vein. Right superior pulmonary vein and right inferior pulmonary vein draining individually to the coronary sinus and then to the RA through the obstructed orifice and left superior pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein form a common chamber and as dual drainage to the coronary sinus and brachiocephalic vein by vertical vein. In that case, rechanneling of the right superior pulmonary vein and right inferior pulmonary vein into the ALA by coronary sinus unlooping and the von Prack technique followed by left sided pulmonary vein rechanneling to left atrial appendage and vertical vein uh, connection uh, left unligated. And in case of right superior pulmonary vein and right inferior pulmonary vein join to form a right common pulmonary vein, left superior pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein join to form a common pulmonary venous chamber that uh, form the board lung draining into the retrocardiac venous plexus and drain infradiagmatically. In that case, under circulatory drives, posterior pericardium was opened and no sizable venous chamber could be identified for rechanneling. Now come to the post-op complication. Most commonly uh, after TPVC patient may present with low cardiac output syndrome that should be managed with reducing the temperature to 35 degree and use of inotrope and patient usually presented with tachycardia, decreased urine output and decreased blood pressure with increased lactate and increase base deficit and jet is also common after TAPVC repair that should be treated with magnesium and potassium level should be corrected and in the, uh, if that is not responding to the conservative therapy amiodarone infusion should be started or ibuprofen can also be given. In case of pH crisis, there are so many pulmonary vasodilators that can be used from enyl nitric oxide, millinone, enyl millinone, and IV sildenafil that can be used. And most difficult complication to manage is delayed pulmonary vein stenosis. And in case of TAPVC, early death is around 5 to 30 percent and late mortality is less than 5 percent and determinate of the mortality are like operation in the early days mixed and infracardiac TAPVC, pulmonary venous obstruction, low weight of the child and poor preoperative physiology and single ventricle physiology. And post-op pulmonary 
venous obstruction that usually present between 6 to 12 months and patient present with recurrent dyspnea and features of pulmonary venous hypertension is present and that can be detected with 2D echo in case of complex anatomy CT or MRI is preferred and anatomical stenosis in the suture line that is usually present in 10 percent and pulmonary venous stenosis is present in 5 percent and anatomical stenosis is treated with uh, lacquer and get sutureless technique and primarily sutureless technique can also be used for TAPVC repair in that case LA appendage is anastomose to the pericardium and that's why uh, uh, age of the vertical age of the common chamber or pulmonary vein is not used in the uh, anastomosis so there is less chance of postoperative PPO and now come to the treatment of pulmonary venous stenosis like sutureless technique and catheter dilatation or stent also can be used and in case of segmental uh, individual pulmonary vein stenosis patch venoplasty can be done and now in case of small uh, PFO and if LSI is adequate ASD can be closed from the left atrium but if ASD is large or if size of the LA is small in that case bicable cannulation will be required and ASD will be closed from the RA side and in case of small uh, left atrium the size of the patch should be more than 1.5 times of the normal patch and that should be sutured with the uh, margin of the ASD. Now whether we should keep the PFO open or not because in case of uh, TAPVC most of the patient may present with post of PA crisis in that case uh, patient may develop uh, right ventricular dysfunction so PFO may help so for neonate 3 mm PFO for infant 4 mm and for uh, patient uh, more than 1 year 5 mm PFO can be kept. Now when we should ligate vertical vein or not vertical vein uh, should be ligated just before opening of the common chamber to prevent pulmonary edema and pulmonary hemorrhage but in case of obstructed TAPVC or in case of uh, infracardiac TAPVC vertical vein can be kept unligated and later coil embolization can be done okay thank you